Hey y'all. So I wanted to make a video showing you guys how to do uh, 3D kinematics calculations in MATLAB. Um, I don't think I'm going to have enough time to go through the full segment definition process like we did in class. So what I'd like to do is to give you guys a little bit of teaser and show you another way of calculating a joint angle, um, which is actually quite a bit more straightforward than using the definition of two segments and then finding Euler angles between the two of them. And the nice thing about this method is it actually allows us to calculate the angle using only three markers. And we're going to use the geometric definition of the dot product to do this. So if I have two vectors, A and B, the definition of the dot product states that the dot product of A and B is equal to the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B times the cosine of the angle between the two vectors, right? So in this case, if we have two vectors, a vector A and a vector B, um, which would be defined by three or more markers, means if I imagine a marker at the center and the marker at each of the two heads, then I can get a mark, an angle between these two vectors. Um, but I could also use two independent vectors going from some point uh, A to a point B, then a point C to a point D or something like that. As long as I have two vectors, I can find the angle between those two vectors in the plane defined by those two vectors. So this is a pretty simple method for us to calculate an angle because we can do it all using just the three-dimensional data and we don't have to define a reference plane because the plane of the angle is defined by the vectors themselves. So if we want to do this, um, first thing we need to do, we need to have some data. So this is using the same data we looked at in class earlier. So I have my walk 001, 002, 003. I've got my auto file load file and I've also got my WMA filter in case I want to filter this data, which I'm not sure if I'll do in this video or not, but we'll take a look and see what the result looks like. And if we want to filter it, we will. So just to reiterate, here I've got all these files in the same directory. I'm going to run my auto file load. That's going to go through and load my walk data into my data structure. right? And now I can either create a separate uh, script to process this data. I can write my script directly into auto file load and save that as a new file. Um, or I can make a new file and then call that file inside auto file load or just call it independently. So this time I'm actually going to do a file. I'm going to call this file uh, knee angle. Okay, new script. I'm going to save this script as knee angle. And because in this file I'm going to calculate the knee angle of the right side. So I'm going to call it the right knee angle, but that's fine. So let's make a comment. Calculate the right knee angle, right? And so this is going to be a script, script file, run after auto file load, or in auto file load. So I can run this script either after I run auto file load on a single file, or I can run it inside auto file load um, as part of a definition. So I'm going to use generic definitions of my markers to get the names. So I'm going to say that I have some vector A, right? And that's going to be the vector from the knee to the ankle. So make sure I get the right name in here. I'm going to go into my walk 001, and then I'm going to find my right ankle marker. So here I have right lateral ankle, and I could use the needle if I wanted to, but since I have lateral on um, the greater trochanter, the knee, and the ankle, I'd prefer to use the ankle. Although I do I want the right ankle, not the left ankle. So let's look for right lateral ankle. And then again, this first part here, this data.p001, that's going to be data.file name, right? So that's the head, and then I'm going to go from the knee to that position. So I'm going to look at the right lateral knee. Again, change the specific file name to the generic file name. That'll be my vector A. My vector B is going to be very similar to this, except for instead of using the right lateral ankle, I'm going to use the right greater trochanter. Right? And if I want to be more specific here, I could call this my shank. Right? And my now it's important to note I'm not actually saving this back into the file name structure. So if I want to keep these vectors um, for use in other pieces of code, 
I should use this as data dot file name dot whatever it is. Um, but I'm just going to leave these like this because it's going to make it easier for me to work. So now you're going to find the magnitude of the shank in the thigh. So I'm just going to say m shank and m thigh for the magnitude. And this calculation is going to be the same basic thing um, for each uh, set of data, right? And I'm going to take the square root of the sum of the shank. And then I'm going to take the square of the elements. Again, so I'm using the dot um, dot exponent. So it's going to do the square of all of the elements rather than the square of the matrix. right? I'm going to take the sum in the second direction or along each of the rows. right? So I'm doing the sum of the column 1 plus column 2, column 3 at time 1. And then that will give me the magnitude of that shank. Again, if I want to check this, since I've already run my auto file load, I can run this, let me comment out, and it's just going to run for just the last file. So if I want to check and see what does my M shank look like, like I don't have any errors here, right, I can do that. I can also plot that M shank using the command like that, and we'll wait for that to pop up. It is here. We can see the shank varies from about 425 millimeters in length uh, to about 435 millimeters in length. And there is some noise there, but it's not too bad, right? Uh, I could also plot this by clicking on M shank inside the workspace and then plotting it, and I get the same thing. So that looks fine. Let's do the same thing for the thigh. So I'm just going to copy and paste this line of code and replace shank with thigh. So now I have the magnitude and the shank and the magnitude of the thigh. Now I need to do the dot product. So again, if I look back at my equation to get the angle, what I really want to do is I want to do the dot product of A and B, or shank and thigh, divided by the magnitude, um, and then take the inverse cosine of that whole thing, right? So I'm going to say uh, theta k, so the theta of the knee, right? It's going to be the dot product. And again, if I hold on for a second here, I can see that the dot product takes vectors A and B and then the direction. So just like the sum, i got to specify which direction I'm going to take the dot product in. Um, that's an optional, so I can try it without it first and see how it works. Um, but we'll see how it goes. So we need to do the shank and the thigh. Right? So the dot product of those two vectors. And then before I actually run this, I'm going to check and make sure that that's giving me the appropriate size. And you see that, like we thought, right? This is doing this dot product along each of the columns rather than along each of the rows. So let's change that to make it in the second direction. Again, we can copy and paste. Try that, making sure it's working. And see, we have a product for that entire array. So that works good. I'm going to use dot divided by. So I'm doing element division. And then I'm going to do the product of the shank times the magnitude of the thigh. Oop, wrong button. All right, so here I have the dot product of the shank and the thigh divided by the magnitude of the shank times the magnitude of the thigh. And I need to do the inverse cosine of the A cosine of that. <coughs> And again, if you wanted to get this in degrees, you could also use A cosine D. So let's plot that out. Uh, oh, I haven't run the whole thing yet. Let's just run the whole thing. So I'm getting values here in terms of the angle of the knee. Right? So I'm going to suppress that. And then I'm going to actually try and plot my theta k and see what it looks like. So here, there's my theta k. And you can see it's varying um, from looks like about pi over 2 to pi. And so what I'm really measuring here is I'm measuring the angle between the, um, the thigh and the shank on the inside of the knee, right? So if that's how you want to define it, where the knee being straight is 180 degrees or pi over 2, and again, if we want this in degrees, I can always change this to D. And I can plot it again. Oop. And 
we should get this in degrees, um, where 180 degrees is fully extended, then that works fine, right? If I want to change this, I get the direction. All I have to do is got to change the direction of the vector of the thought, and then I'm looking at the angle between the shank and the positive or the extended vector of the thigh, which will give me zero degrees at full extension. So if I make this the negative thigh, and then run it again, this should give us the opposite convention. And so here we can see that the knee angle now is looking at the, the extension of the thigh, or the opposite direction, so going from the, from the hip to the knee, that vector, relative to the vector from the knee to the shank to the ankle for the shank um, which is closer to what you see as being more typically represented in terms of the knee flexion angle because it's the angle of flexion not the angle of extension it just depends on the convention you're using so that's fairly straightforward gives me a nice uh, plot here of the knee angle right and since I've written this this way uh, it's pretty scalable to um, go back into a generic process so if I want to save my knee angle so if I care about my angle of my knee and I want it in degrees, I can put that back into my structure. I can save that, right? And then I can actually call this file inside my auto file load. So I'm gonna call this knee angle. Right? So now when I run auto file load, it's gonna calculate knee angle every time it goes through that. And so if I go back into my data structure, here I have theta k for each of my variables, right? And if I wanted to plot all these out, I can do plot of data dot file name dot theta underscore k. And if I wanted to add that plot each time, I'll hold on after that. And now I should get a plot of all three angles. You can see there's a bit of a phase shift there, but this uh, person, which I think is me, uh, does have a fairly consistent gait where the knee angle has a pretty pronounced um, stance phase flexion and then a nice even um, swing phase flexion. So hopefully that's interesting and you guys would be able to replicate that on your own if you want to calculate the angle um, of the knee or any other complex using this three, three marker definition. And I'll see you guys all in class again soon. Thanks for watching.